and we're live. Go ahead, Mr. Chair. Okay, thank you, Sylvia. Um, good afternoon, everybody. I want to thank you. So we actually have two meetings, uh, Zoo Board meetings this afternoon. The first one is to consider our one-year extension of electronic meeting rules, uh, which brings the board into uh, a cohesive uh, meeting structure as outlined by Toronto City Council. Uh, so I'm going to call this meeting to order. Uh, as I said, we have our one item of business, ZB 11.1. So I need, um, does anybody have any questions or concerns about it? She just Would wanted anybody? to move. <laughs> yeah, Cynthia, just you want just want to move it? All right. Cynthia is moving the recommendation before us. All in favor of the motion before us? Thank you. That motion carries. So, Sylvia, I can adjourn this meeting? Uh, well, uh, if I could ask you just to please ask for declarations of interest. Oh, okay. Sure. As a first one. Does anybody have any declarations of conflict or interest under the Ontario Municipal of Conflict of Interest Act? Seeing none. Now, can I adjourn it, Sylvia? Nope. Yes, the business for the special meeting uh, is concluded. All right. All in favor of adjourning this meeting? Carried. And then, uh, sorry, I'm just going to open up the agenda for our next meeting. <laughs> All right. And then. Sorry, I just need a moment. I have to find my script. All right. All right. So for our two o'clock meeting, good afternoon. My name is Paul Ainsley. I'm the chair of the board of management of the Toronto Zoo. The clerk has confirmed that we have quorum, so I would like to now call meeting number 12 of the Board of Management of the Toronto Zoo to, to order. Nice to see everybody again, although it's uh, virtual, but I'm great to see everybody. Uh, this meeting is being held using the city's WebEx technology with members and staff connecting by video conference or calling in. Because we're meeting remotely, we ask for your patience with any delays and technical issues. Uh, we do not have any registered speakers today, and members of the public can observe the meeting on YouTube. I would like to request that all staff keep their video turned off unless they need to speak or answer questions. This will make it easier for me as the chair and for those watching on YouTube to observe members as they participate in the debate on each item and during votes. I would also like to ask that all members and staff keep their microphones on mute unless you need to answer a question or speak. <clears throat> if members do wish to speak on an item, I ask that you wait until staff are presented. I will then ask if any members wish to ask questions of staff or to speak. I'll be keeping a list. If you do, please make sure your video is on and raise your hand or unmute your mic and let me know that you would like to speak and I will be creating the speakers list as I just mentioned. Uh, when voting, I ask that members make sure your video is also turned on and raise your hands to indicate your vote. Although we're in different locations and meeting remotely today, the board would like to acknowledge that the land which we usually meet is our traditional territory of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabe, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendat peoples, and is now home to many diverse First Nations, Inuit, and Métis peoples. We also acknowledge that Toronto is covered by Treaty Number 13 with the Mississaugas of the Credit and the Williams Treaty signed with multiple Mississaugas and Chippewa bands. Uh, at this point, I'm going to ask if there's any declarations of interest under the Municipal Conflict of Interest Act. If you do have an interest, if you could please raise your hand or unmute your mic and let me know. Uh, seeing none, I now call for the adoption of the minutes of our last meeting. Could I please have a motion? for the adoption of the minutes of the meeting of the Board of Management of the Toronto Zoo held on July 24th, 2020. Moved by Councillor McKelvey. All in favor? 
Carrie? Sorry, lost my script again. Our first item of business uh, is ZB 12.1, Toronto Zoo Wildlife Conservation Authority. Uh, we do have a presentation on this item, so I will hold this item down. Our uh, next item is ZB 12.2, which is the Chief Executive Officer's update, so I will uh, hold that. Our uh, next item is ZB 12.3, the 2021 Operating Plan and Budget. Uh, and there's a presentation on this one from Aliyah Lee, so I will hold that. Uh, our next item is uh, our capital budget. Um, Dolph, is Aliyah going to be making a presentation on this? or? Yes, yes, she has that as well, Paul. Okay. Uh, and then our next item is number five is the attendance and revenue report as of August, uh, 2020. Did, um, any members wish to hold this item or speak to it? S seeing none, could I have someone uh, move the recommendations in this report? Moved by Cynthia. Seconded by Cynthia, Cynthia and Cynthia, Cynthia Lai, and Cynthia Holmes is seconding. All in favor? Carried. Our uh, next item is number six, the Toronto Zoo Community Conservation Campus Report. Would anybody like to hold this item? Does anybody have any questions on it? Can I get somebody to move the recommendations? Matthew, seconded by Claudia. All in favor? Carried. Okay, and we're going to go back to the beginning. Whoops. So our first item is uh, ZB 12.1, the Toronto Zoo Wildlife Conservancy. And we have a presentation from Beth Galefsi, the Executive Director. Beth, whenever you're ready. Hi, thanks. Paul. I'm just going to jump in there. It's Dolph uh, really like quickly, that. and, and uh, not quite. Um, I just, I, you know, really excited to have Beth uh, here. She was supposed to be here earlier, uh, but uh, with the pandemic, we we delayed this presentation. Um, but this is um, an update and a really exciting one. As as many of you know, uh, talk about bringing our wildlife conservancy back uh, predates me significantly, um, and it's been uh, quite a journey. Uh, but we're now in a spot where we're starting to actually see some of the fruits of our labors. And uh, I'm really excited about what uh, what Beth has to share, and we'll kick it over to her. Thank you so much, Dolph, and thank you, Councillor Ainsley. And uh, um, hello, everybody, and thank you for having uh, given me the opportunity to speak about the Wildlife Conservancy. I'm just going to ask if the slide presentation could be brought up on screen. That's possible. Yes, just one second. We're just bringing it up. Thank you very much. All right, well, thank you very much. So uh, I want to, I'm really excited today to tell you about the Wildlife Conservancy. The Wildlife Conservancy was established uh, back actually in 2018, uh, but it received its charitable status on January 1st, 2019, and the operations of the organization began on June 24th, 2019, with the Wildlife Conservancy. As its executive director, um, is, uh, with the Toronto Zoo, our articles of incorporation are the overall guiding document for what we um, are uh, all about as, as a conservancy to receive and maintain a fund or funds that can be applied to the Toronto Zoo. And we've been doing that for the last 16 months. 
I'm going to show you a snapshot of some of the projects we've been working on. I thought it'd be great to show you some of the faces of the Wildlife Conservancy. We have our own board of directors, we are a separate charitable foundation from the Toronto Zoo. Um, I like to say that we are linked by passion and by purpose, and I really enjoy working with my colleagues at the Toronto Zoo and all the great work we do in conservation. Some of you might recommend. I recognize Paul Doyle, who's the board chair. Uh, he was on the board for a period of time. Uh, Robin Halo of the Toronto Zoo. We have Cal Berger, who I, I think also was on the Zoo Board of Management at one time. Uh, you may know Dolph DeYoung. Uh, he shows up from time to time. Uh, we have uh, Suzanne McDonald, who's a professor at uh, York University. She, she's a researcher in behavioral sciences and has been uh, working at the zoo, working on projects with the zoo for over 20 years now. Um, to the right of Suzanne in the hat is uh, uh, Marion Zimmer, who's my colleague uh, at the Wildlife Conservancy. She's director of fund development, and she has been there for about 15 years, and she's um, a terrific colleague to have, and she knows so much about the zoo and about the, the donors and, and, and how we've been fundraising in the past and how we should do it going forward. So um, that's our team, again, uh, united by passion and purpose, and uh, I'm really happy to be talking about the work that we've done to date. So we'll go to the next slide, please. Probably the most exciting thing that we've done at the Wildlife Conservancy and the most unexpected thing that we've done uh, since we started with the Zoo Food for Life program. Uh, we were looking for a way in the winter to launch the Conservancy in a formal way. We had never had a, a formal launch of the, this new organization uh, in the way of what had been done the lunch, but we thought we'll along with the fundraising program. And the program that we designed was to offset the, the lost revenues. We've been closed for about a month. Um, this would be April. We've been closed for about a month, and we're losing those revenues from from parking and from admissions. And so we um, designed a program called Zoo Food for Life to raise funds for zoo um, zoo food to offset the lost parking revenues. Uh, we were hoping to raise maybe a hundred thousand in the next six weeks, so by the end of May. Um, and we had already raised two hundred thousand by midnight that night, and four hundred the next day. And within a couple of weeks, we raised raised over a million dollars for this program. It was really, really outstanding. We had about 9,000 donations made. Um, about 6,000 of them were new donors to the Toronto Zoo Wildlife Conservancy. And even I'm afraid that I've lost sound. I don't know if anybody else also has the same problem. I just did as well. Beth, maybe you might want to cut your video. Sorry, Beth, I can see you, but I can't hear you. Did we just lose Beth? I can see her, I just can't hear her. Too. Maybe in the chat. Yeah, I've just texted her and asked her to cut her video and try to come back to the sound. Okay. Hey, Beth, I'm not sure if you can hear us, but we can't hear or see you at this point. City clerk staff are just communicating with the director to suggest that perhaps if uh, 
cutting her video didn't work, uh, she may wish to try connecting to the meeting uh, via telephone only. So we're providing her with the connection details for the phone number and access code. Thank you. Can you hear me? Mr. Hello there. Oh, there we are. Here. Hi. All right. I'm so sorry about that. I don't know what the problem is. I have full strength on my signal, but um, we can go back to the presentation um, on Zoo Food. I will uh, take, pick it up from there if possible. Okay, perfect. Thanks, Beth. Okay, so sorry about that. So I, I'm not sure how far we got, but let's just put it uh, really succinctly. Over a million dollars donated in just a few short weeks and um, about 750000 of that was for zoo food, and we have so far distributed about $520,000 of that money back to the zoo to cover costs. So it was a really great program, identified a lot of donors, raised our profile, lots of media. Really, really pleased with, with how that turned out. Can we go to the next slide, please? We have other achievements that over the past 16 months in, the, in our operations. There's the Compass Group Pledge of $3 million over two years which has been a really great boost to um, the start of our organization. We have the donation of a mobile greenhouse. Uh, the intention originally was to use this for demonstration of food production for our animals um, and enrichment. Um, during COVID, everything sort of changes and, and gets retooled, and we were able to use this as retail space for a short period of time, uh, but eventually it will be deployed back to its original intent. Uh, we have helped uh, with the securement of about a million dollars in grants in the last 16 months, uh, which has been really great grants for conservation programs, um, really terrific work being carried out there. Uh, we also have had a, a significant increase in planned giving donors. Uh, we don't know precisely how many of them have actually put the conservancy in their will and, the, and uh, to support the Toronto Zoo, but we know we've had a number of very, very strong conversations and um, are expecting quite a nice, um, quite a nice response in terms of, of being in people's wills, and and requests are becoming more and more an, an important fundraising tool. Next slide. Please. This chart is just to show you um, some of the success of the, the wildlife conservancy since we've come on, and how we compare to to previous years. Um, there's definitely been a surge in funds received since the wildlife conservancy came on. That's not to say that there weren't many great years um, as the development department at the Toronto Zoo, but there has been some new energy, some new ideas, um, a little bit higher profile that uh, has allowed us to show some really great wins there. So what we have on the left-hand side are um, the three quarters prior to, uh, sorry, the three six-month periods prior to the conservancy coming on board. Um, and then in green, we have the Wildlife Conservancy as the fundraising entity for the Toronto Zoo. Um, some of the shaded areas you can see in the bar for 234-2019, that's the compass money from last year. We're going to be getting more of that uh, this fiscal year and a little bit next as well. Um, back in uh, Q1 and 2 of 2020, we have a shaded area showing the Zoo Food for Life donations that came in. So that was a significant um, amount of money um, in that quarter, but we also had other donations as well. And today in this quarter... Um, it shows in this chart that um, of our projection, we've received 1.6 million. In fact, we just received a very large request of close to $400,000. So we've already um, increased that amount secured for this uh, for this quarter. So we're we're making tracks, and and our goal is to raise those monies and get them back to the Toronto Zoo to really support their their program. Next slide. It's not all about the money, though, and this is a, a really interesting study that uh, that we um, started last year. for talking to people last year about um, this is another way in which we're supporting the Toronto Zoo and, and gaining um, information and insight into our um, into our donors and into the community of Toronto. So we initiated a wildlife literacy study. The intent of the study was to determine what the level of awareness uh, was in people around wildlife issues, so the issues facing them. 
um, you know, in Canada, around the world, um, and the actions that they can take to help wildlife. So this is a baseline study. It was conducted um, late summer this year. We initially were going to do it in March, but of course that didn't happen. Uh, we had about a thousand respondents um, in the GPA, and we had some really interesting preliminary results. Now the the report is being compiled, and it probably won't be released for a couple of months now. But um, in the next slide, I just want to show you some really interesting results that we were quite excited by. Could you just go to the next slide, please? So this is one of the areas, there were a number of questions asked, but one of the areas that we studied, we were asking people how aware they were about conservation issues. We had six conservation issues. Um, three of them um, that we are specifically looking at right now, sea ice melting, so the impact on polar bears, palm oil harvesting and the impact that that has on orangutans, the matching tigers, other animals, um, and rare earth mineral extraction. So on the right-hand side, you see some arrows. The most arrows, the height of the arrow, represents the level of awareness. So the higher the arrow, the more aware they are. And across the top, you'll see on the left-hand side, no visit to the zoo in the last five years, one visit, two to three, and more than four visits to the zoo in the last five years. So with polar bears, with sea ice melting, everybody, whether they come to the zoo or not, is equally aware of the issues of polar bears. It's a very topical issue in the media. Lots of people know about it. But what we found really, really exciting is the results for things like palm oil harvesting and rare earth mineral extraction and the impact that they're having on wildlife. And it shows that the people who come to the zoo more often are more aware of these issues compared to those who never come to the zoo. And there's a really interesting and uh, direct relationship there. And it shows that we have a real role to play in conveying these issues to the public. And educating them and helping make change for these animals. So we're quite excited by this, and there's lots more about this study that we'll roll out in the, in the coming weeks or coming months. Next slide. Another really great partnership that's a fairly new one um, is the Eagle uh, Research Partnership. And this is a behavioral research um, program uh, joint by the Toronto Zoo and Eagle, which is a technology company. Um, they have a technology for COVID uh, detection for temperature detection, as well as European University. So what this program is going to do is take that technology and adapt it so that we can monitor animal welfare and behavior. We're going to start with orangutans. It could be expanded to other animals. This is very cutting edge and very new. Uh, and the Wildlife Conservancy um, was pleased to provide a $50,000 grant towards the equipment purchase for this really great program. So we'll go to the next slide. The focus that we have on fundraising right now, so I'm sort of bringing you out today, that's where we are right now. Um, we have sort of three main areas, securing these major and transformational gifts, expanding our plan giving commitments, and increasing the number of monthly donors. Those are the things that we're focusing on, uh, but the most important one of those is the first one, securing these major and transformational gifts. Uh, there's a lot of value in the other programs that they bring on new donors that we can move up. Uh, up the line to be, um, you know, increasing their their commitment to the organization. Uh, but without the, the large gifts, um, it's really hard to, to generate the funds that we need to to um, support big programs like the orangutan habitat and, and others. So this is the focus we have right now, and, and we have a team, a campaign work group that uh, meets every week to talk about prospects and, and people who can connect us to others that may have interest in our story. Can we go to the next slide, please? So the way we fundraise at the Toronto Zoo and the way I like to um, approach fundraising is about storytelling. So when we fundraise, we're not simply asking someone for money. We're providing them with an opportunity, an opportunity to engage and make their own difference for wildlife conservation. It's truly a different mindset, but it's a really important shift to go from asking for money to providing opportunity. And that's what we're doing. And a lot of people want that opportunity to help wildlife to help causes like that. So uh, this is our approach. Uh, it's about relationship building. It's about finding people who can connect us. Uh, we know that a good prospect should have three main um, attributes. They should have a connection to us in some way or a connection to people who can help us. They should have an, an affinity for what we do. They, they've got to like our mission. And they've got to have the capacity to give or to help us find others who have the capacity to give. So this is what we've been really working on a lot lately, Dolph and I and others on the board and um, also on staff 
is identifying individuals who can help with the storytelling. As board members, you are uh, some of the best storytellers we have about the work of the zoo and the needs of the zoo. So Dolph and I are looking forward to connecting with you over the next several weeks for Zoom coffee or maybe a walkabout at the zoo and talking about your own um, interest in uh, the, the zoo fundraising program and connections that you may have to, to help us with our, our uh, major donor prospecting. So uh, we really look forward to that. And thank you for your patience with the technology. I'm so sorry that that was a, a bit of a hiccup. Thank you, Captain Ray. Thank you for that, Beth. And, and to our board members, you know, um, Debbie and Beth and I will be in touch. Uh, we really are looking uh, for your support and your activation on this. Uh, we've seen our community, you know, falling in love with their zoo again, and we really want to take those next steps. And we're going to talk a little bit more about some of the things that are in the pipeline. Uh, but um, this um, this need for support goes beyond uh, just the governance meetings that we have, and we're looking forward to uh, getting you out and explaining what we're looking for and the help we need looks like. Okay. Thank you, Dolph. Beth, thank you very much for the great presentation. Uh, does anybody have any questions for Beth? Comments for Beth? Mr. Chair, I, I have my hand up. Sorry, go ahead, Cynthia. Thank you. Just wanted to uh, thank Beth for, for the presentation. Are we going to get a copy of the, uh, the presentation? I believe it is in your package. It was um, provided uh, earlier today. Oh, 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 it was. I'm sorry. I didn't, I didn't uh, no manage just to see that. I, I, I thought I read something, but I didn't get it. Was it this morning that I got it, supposedly, or...? Because I've been reading, I wet my agenda last night, so I don't know, I might have missed it. I received sorry, it I about an hour ago. I received it about one o'clock. Oh, okay. So I haven't, I haven't had a chance to, I have, I'm, we're having back-to-back -back meeting today, so I haven't had a chance to read that. So sorry about that. So I'm good. I'm good. Thank you. So I look forward to, uh, please reach out to me, you know, if I can be of any help. I look forward to uh, contributing my, uh, my two cents. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's much appreciated. Thanks, Cynthia. Uh, anyone else with questions or comments for Beth? I, I'd raise my hand electronically, so uh, I'll raise it. Sorry, Claudia. <laughs> physically. Um, I also wanted to commend Beth for the incredible, to, to have these kinds of successes in the middle of a global pandemic. I mean, these successes would have been stunning uh, were it not for COVID-19, but in the context of the pandemic, I mean, that's amazing. Um, I'm particularly excited because since I came on the board, I've, I've pushed for uh, work in the area of planned giving uh, because I felt like that was a, an untapped area. And to see not only have you gone down that road, but you've done so incredibly well with it is really exciting. And uh, I joined Cynthia in saying that uh, I have, I would be very happy to assist in uh, the major donor identification very much. That's wonderful. Thank you so much. We'll be we'll be in touch. <laughs> Thank you, Claudia. Uh, other members of the board. Uh, seeing none, Beth, I just wanted to to thank you on behalf of the board for all the, of your hard work and and dedication so far. In particular, it really stood out at the beginning of. Uh, COVID as the city was getting into tighter financial restrictions and uh, the reach went out for people to make donations to the zoo uh, to ensure that the animals were fed and comfortable and um, just want to thank you for for that and for all the other work that you're doing as well. Thank you so much. I'm looking forward to talking with you soon. Okay. Bye-bye. Okay. Um, Seeing that, I need uh, sorry, someone to move acceptance of Beth's report. Cynthia Lai, seconded by Rebecca Pang. All in favor? Carried. And uh, Dolph, I believe you're up next with our your uh, chief executive officer update. 
Thank you very much, Paul, and uh, great to see everybody. Um, you know, sometimes it's easy to forget that in late February, we made a really important choice for our organization when we ratified a new strategic plan. And Beth talked about that mission, you know, connecting people, animals, and conservation science to fight extinction. And, you know, three weeks before the pandemic struck, you know, we made, you know, that, that switch to that new mission. And it served us incredibly well uh, through that time. Um, that, that strategic plan being only having a three-week lag time between its launch or its uh, adoption and the arrival of the pandemic hasn't really received the launch it's due. Um, so that's why I wanted to start there today, because it's, it's something that recently we've started to take that peak back to the horizon. And we need to talk about that uh, today as much as the operational realities we face day to day. You know, our five priorities, just, just by way of reminder, number one, save wildlife. That's looking after individual animals here and out there, as well as those climate change and biodiversity type actions. Ignite the passion. We know our team of, of, of supporters, be they board members, volunteers, staff members, are critical to being successful in achieving that mission. The third, create wow. We're not looking to be an average zoo. We're not looking to be an okay zoo. We're not looking to be a good zoo. We're looking to be a great zoo. Uh, and we want those experiences when they're there to really create wow with people. Number four, our zoo and our community. And little did we know as we headed into a pandemic how important that community would be uh, to help us with those fundraising type gifts that Beth described, but also um, that intangible support. As we've seen, our online uh, fans and followers now exceed half a billion. Um, up over from 300,000 prior to the start of this. So, you know, we've really seen that growth. And then the last, embracing technology. How do we become the most technologically advanced zoo in the world in 10 years? And, and just for context today, we have, uh, at last check, I think it was about 2,300 people pre-booked to come to our zoo. So paid guests, as well as um, our members, and every one of those booked in advance. You know, before that pandemic, that number was about 2%. So as we look to find operational you know, consistency and, and know how to staff, these have been incredible uh, changes and pivots. With regards to COVID-19, you know, I'd, be, I'd be lying if I didn't say it's not been incredibly challenging for our team. Um, navigating the mix of recommendations and regulations uh, to protect our staff, our guests, and our animals no matter what as our kind of COVID-19 micro uh, mission has been, has been challenging. The week before Thanksgiving, um, following the direction of our Chief Medical Officer of Health, um, we followed a recommendation and closed our facilities to just evaluate again, to bring in the experts to make sure we were taking every reasonable precaution, and then reopened again on Thanksgiving. Today, we operate uh, our outdoor facilities, our indoor facilities, but we have closed um, our attractions. The the uh, carousel is closed, Hunter Air is closed, uh, but we are continuing to serve our members, serve our guests, and serve our community, which is so important, being that place where people can get outside. Um, we continue to roll out new processes, um, focusing on things like having more management staff on, on site when we cross certain thresholds for guests to make sure we're doing everything we can to ensure physical distancing to remind people of masks, to make sure we're moving people through and keeping things clean. So really taking that position of health leadership for our zoo. While all that's going on, the projects are still moving. Uh, if you get a chance to visit, let me know and, and we'll take you out and you can see the orangutan habitat. The Gower House is gone. The area has been uh, cleared out. Underground infrastructure is going in place and we're really excited to be on schedule to have our orangs with the opportunity to get back out for the summer of next year. It's gonna be a huge new addition for us. The planning on the conservation campus, uh, you saw the report and then have approved it. It's important for two reasons. One, idolizing that entry, and two, 20 plus letter support from across our community. And that's Scarborough, Toronto, Ontario, and nationally uh, saying they believe in this project. So I mentioned earlier that, that need to kind of take a peek towards the future again. We've also launched updates to our master plan. You last approved this plan in 2016, and, and it was an ambitious plan. It was significant. But the days of us hosting 19,000 guests a day, 
are going to be on pause for a little while as our community recovers from COVID-19, rebuilds the confidence, and we see it as an important time to recalibrate. Supporting that is writing a technology master plan that actually will bring together technology and physical infrastructure. No longer can these be two separate veins. They need to be built into our thinking. So again, we reach people here and out there and enhance those experiences. So those are rolling along. And we'll be asking for your participation in that process in the upcoming months. As far as updates on budget and guests with a the scale of our finance discussions today, uh, Leah Lee, our Director of Finance and Technology, will provide you a lot of those updates. And we'll be talking about the new initiatives that continue to roll out. We were going to launch Boo at the Zoo on Thanksgiving weekend. And again, in four days, had to pivot to make it a drive through experience as we went back to Enhanced Stage 2. If you haven't seen Halloween, it's worth a trip out. An incredible talent by both our staff but also community partners at Centennial College and Scarborough Health Network doing some massive hay bale decorating that's worth checking out. Our marketplace was a success. A few of you made it to brew at the zoo. And Terra Lumina started back up on August 15th, and we've seen over 12,000 guests in that time. That's important because that's actually a 91% occupancy rate for our new COVID-19 safe levels of around 100 people every 15 minutes a couple days a week. So again, really, really um, hats off to our team for grinding it out and finding innovative, innovative ways to bring things back. And hopefully in the next month or so, our partners at Compass will have our liquor license in place to further enhance that experience for certain adult uh, tastes. So we are proud of our staff for continuing to evolve and adjust. Um, there's new pieces coming down the pipe that you will see, a new digital app, that we've put together in partnership with Centennial College is in its last steps. Our team this week literally worked 36 hours straight to make a significant ask to the federal government via the Climate Action and Awareness Fund, something we're calling the CALL, Community Action, Learning and Leadership, as far as making sure underserved communities get to plug in to the challenges of climate change, what they can do to help, and why it matters to places like our green spaces in the city and our zoo. We have a holiday market coming online in December to help, help celebrate the season. We're also looking at opening Christmas Day. As we look at being a zoo that thoroughly supports all parts of our community, we see this as a great opportunity. I came from Vancouver, where we'd see thousands of people on Christmas Day. In a world where going to the movie theater might not be as comfortable, um, we can be that outdoor retreat, and we think it's an important next step. Related to that, um, we're also working with community leaders to bring out a new award ceremony. So we'll be talking to many of you about this, looking for your help in the spring uh, to recognize folks who have gone above and beyond during the COVID-19 piece, because that community connection uh, remains a key driver for us. Yesterday, Jennifer Tracy dropped off several hundred tickets to Toronto Community Housing, again, making sure people from all walks of life have a chance to come to our zoo. And when they get there, we are now in the planning stage for a multi-faith room on site. Make sure if you want that quiet space, that moment to get away, we'll be offering it. That ties to our cultural leadership as far as a new equi equity, diversity, and inclusion strategy uh, being led by our VP of Human Resources. We have a human uh, steering committee set up. We're working with a consultant who's an expert in the field. We have an EDI statement uh, drafted that we're reviewing and consulting with people on. We've been consulting with groups like Wood Green, Storefront, the Duro Foundation, Toronto Community Housing, as far as getting their input in it. And we'll be launching a, an EDI survey for our employees in the upcoming weeks. So part of our um, recognition, we talked about the Black Lives Matter movement at our last meeting and the need for our zoo to really take those next steps and mature. Um, in the meantime, we've done... Um, EDI overview and unconscious bias training with our staff and, and more folks will be engaging in that in the following week and looking at having you know those positive spaces um, to do the training to evolve. So all of this is coming along as we look for your zoo to be a cultural leader. And finally, you know the need for our zoo to continue to operate in the realm of thought leadership. Yesterday you may have noticed we hosted an announcement with the Ministry of Conservation, Environment and Parks on litter traps in our Great Lakes and the issues of pollution, which will include us actually having demonstration sites on 
uh, at our zoo. And I think that's a key piece of our thought leadership as we continue uh, to reframe and step up our profile. I also had the opportunity to speak at the North American Association of Science Centers conference on the pandemic and the impacts on a panel we called WTF 2020, um, simply, which of course means what the future um, and looking to how we're going to continue to evolve and grow. Today, Jennifer Tracy will be joining us a little bit late. Um, she's actually meeting with the Minister of Tourism um, and Culture, Lisa McLeod, to talk about the role of zoos and aquariums and how we need to be part of the recovery strategy and we want to contribute to that planning. And, you know, finally, I just want to close with a note from one of our volunteers. We had our volunteer appreciation event uh, this past week. Historically, we would have had a get together. You have been invited. We would have been in the special events tent and had some strawberries and wine. But uh, unfortunately, our, our COVID world did not allow that. So we did, we did a Zoom uh, event and the team was incredible. They had singing, they had all sorts of great things to mix it up because uh, Lord knows we do a lot of these calls. Um, but let me read that note. I'd like to extend my thanks to you and the entire team for last night's fun. 2020 is proving the start of extraordinary times. And the grace and resilience that the entire 1TZ team has is awe-inspiring. It was an honor to be a part of this extraordinary group. Thank you for your support. 1TZ will beat C19. So with that, Mr. Chair, I would open it up to questions. Okay. Thank you, Dolph. Much appreciated. Does anybody have any questions for Dolph? Anybody? Anybody at all? Uh, no questions, Dolph. It looks like we're letting you off the hook. There's one. Oh, Cynthia, there. Cynthia Lai. Councillor Lai. Uh, not a question. I just want to give a, a, little, a little pat on, uh, on, uh, on Dolph's shoulder and on your team as well. I mean, uh, everybody is really coping with, uh, with the pandemic, and I, I hope uh, everybody is getting, you know, uh, you have persevered through this and your persistence and your, your really tireless efforts. We really appreciate that. Just, just wanted to uh, say this to you and your team, Dolph. Much appreciated. Thank you. They've, they've been amazing. And, uh, yeah, I can't say enough about how they've continued to to both uh, deal with the clear and present issues in front of them and then uh, make the pivot literally to sometimes the next week. And, and now it's, it's been amazing. We've done enough of the various openings. We know what it's like to be open. We know what it's like to be open with some buildings, with no buildings. We know what it's like to be open with attractions. They've, they've built an incredible playbook that has set us up to be as nimble as possible while looking after people's well-being. So thank you for that. And I will share that with them because it means, it means the world to them. Excellent. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I need a motion to receive Dolph's report. Matthew, seconded by Brittany. All in favor? Carried. And next is the report on our operating budget and operating plan and budget. Uh, Aliyah, who's our Director of Finance and Technology, uh, has a presentation for us. Did you want to speak first, Dolph? Yes, please. And um, many of you, I think most of you have had the chance to meet Aliyah. She joined us in December and, and brought in you know, some really amazing thinking from her experience in the private sector, as well as her passion that uh, she had as a long-term Zoo member. And, you know, we've, we've brought her in at a pretty challenging time, you know, to both uh, deal with the loss of, of two amazing long-term staff members and come in in a period of transition for our Zoo, new strategic plan, and then add the pandemic on it. Um, so Aaliyah and her team and, and the entire team have really uh, gone to the edges of the earth to bring this plan together, to be as aggressive as possible as far as managing our costs, as well as also, you know, making sure we stay true to who we are. You know, that mission, I'm going to keep repeating. We want to connect people, animals, and conservation science to fight extinction. We need guests and we need our online community to do that effectively. And they've come up uh, with this, this budget plan. Um, she's changed the format of the presentation since the budget uh, committee's meeting, um, but otherwise it is, it is pretty much the same. And with that, I'll uh, kick it over to you, Olivia. Thank you, Dolph. It is really my pleasure to be here presenting this budget with you. And I have to thank you for the incredible team that we have. It, the collaborations and coordination for putting this plan together was amazing. So I'm sure um, I'd like to take you over 
on our journey on what we have done. So uh, if I may ask the CP clerk to open up the PowerPoint presentation. Thank you. So I'm going to present the operating budget and pause for questions, and then at the capital budget afterwards. Next slide, please. I will give you an overview on 2020's budget, sorry, 2020's actual performance, and then following that with the city guidance on 2021's budget, and then descriptions on how we have the operating budget formulated. Next slide. 2020, as Dov has mentioned, it is a very challenging year, but we also found a lot of opportunities for us. Next slide. We are all living under a shadow of COVID-19, and our challenge mainly comes from the limitations of having guests on sites, um, just up to 5,000 guests per day. So on a busy day in the summertime, we can be down up to 68% of, of guests per day. So a lot of our rides and education programs are also closed. Next slide. But Toronto Zoo cares. We care for our animals, we care for our guests, staffs and volunteers, and we more care about our community. So with this care, it's taking care of us through the charity and taking care of everyone. Next slide. As Dolph has mentioned, the strategic plan is a gift for us at the beginning of the year. We are very lucky to have it. It helps us to prioritize our need for focusing on what is important for dealing with COVID-19 in this situation. And all these five priorities has tremendously helped us in conquering the roadblocks that was in front of us. Next slide. So when we see challenges, we also see opportunities. We found a very quick and effective transition into operations, people working from home and staff working on site safely. We have ensured the safety of our staff, animals, and guests during this pandemic. Next, please. First initiative that we have implemented in 2020 was the was the uh, Scenic Safari ride as a as an initiative so that people can ride in their own comfort of their own car. And surprisingly, this initiative was very very successful, and it gave us. $3 million of revenue that was not originally budgeted. Next slide. And then our team with their innovations and quick adaption to the new world, we have already established a lot of the online programs. There are more than 10 programs and one of which is called Zoo Connections. That is a pay service where families, business and community groups can connect us with the zoo staff and animals online. And this program has been so successful. If you can turn to the next slide, you can see that the reach of this connections program, it has reached the entire world. We have people from Asia countries also are joining us at Toronto Zoo. And we've reached to a very dynamic and different set of guests online. Next slide. We opened up Terra Illumina early, as Dolph mentioned, and one of the uh, intention is also because of the limitation of COVID, open up, opening it up early will allow us to serve our guests more. And so far, the program has been so successful, we have been selling out our tickets almost every night. Next slide. And there, were, there are many more initiatives in 2020 that we implemented. A lot of them is uh, as a result of COVID. And these initiatives will continue, and we have found success in most of them. We also celebrated our new family members joining us, and that has gone with very good tractions online. We have the baby giraffe and baby rat panda, and with all the initiatives that we're currently having, and also the upcoming Christmas holiday market, we hope that we will be able to allow our guests to enjoy our services in a brand new, different way. Next slide, please. 2020 is a year of building partnerships, and COVID has actually accelerated the progress on that. Also, we have enhanced our existing partnerships. 
So we really want to become a true community hub. Conservation science is important, so we are partnering with our funding partners to contribute to conservation science. Technology and academic institutions are joining us to continue to find new ways to serve our guests, to be able to take care of our animals, and we have community partners continuing to support us. Next slide, please. As Beth has uh, presented, there is a lot of support that Toronto Zoo has received from the Toronto Zoo Wildlife Conservancy, and they'll continue to find new ways and of new fundings to support our activities. And as Beth mentioned, that there was Zoo Food for Life that has given us tremendous savings on our animal food, and the initiative for animal care using AI equipment is really one of a kind. Next slide. We also build more than a handful of community partners. We are very gracious of joining, having them joining us on this journey to bring on new experiences for our guests. Next slide, please. And on the technology side, we've accelerated a lot of the initiatives and we have reached out to many different ways of uh, engaging guests to be able to experience new technology, and take the leap forward as a more most technologically advanced zoo in the world. We're on the path of doing so. Next slide, please. It is a very difficult year, but our work on conservation hasn't stopped. We remain very focused, and we our breeding programs continue to be very successful. Next slide, please. Um, one very successful celebration just uh, in the past month is the Reproductive Science Research, research Milestone. Dr. Masaronico established a new foundation for species preservation. And maybe to your surprise, Toronto Zoo is actually the only biobank on animals and species in Canada. Next slide, please. And this is a highlight on our attendance, as we expected, as we close our door in April, since March, middle of March, April has zero attendance. And we started opening up our zoo in the spring and summertime. Our average attendance is only 52% of our budget. For the year to date, we have achieved 46%. Next slide, please. The revenue is in a similar story as the attendance. We had no revenue in April, but we are able to capture some revenue, not as, a, as the same level as attendance as we can expect that people would have a difficult time of uh, providing us with additional revenue. However, we are able to capture 44% of the budget revenue and then 36% to year to date. Next slide, please. As the office mentioned, that we had we are tremendously grateful to have two plans in front of us. We know with our new strategic plan, we need to refresh our master plan and adapting to our new COVID reality to help us understand what is important in front of us. So these two plans, the technology master plan and the master plan, will help us to build a path forward, a, a path that will lead to a, a better future for all of us. Next slide, please. So with those plans, I'd like to bring to you the 2021 assumptions, expectations, and directions for 2021. Next slide, please. Before I start the, with the uh, details on the operating plan, I'd like to take you through our journey and let you know how this comprehensive process and how we're very well thought out on our process is to contribute to this budget process. At the beginning, we started our process to align mission, vision, strategic plan, and goal setting in June. After having some initiatives and prioritization, we transformed them into dollar value as divisional alignment and goal setting. Scenario analysis and assumptions were key in putting a, a very optimistic budget together. And then in September, we submitted our budget. We reviewed, the we reviewed the budget with the Policy and Finance Committee. We submitted the budget to the city and discussed with the city's financial planning team to refine it. And now we're obtaining your approval. Next slide, please. The assumptions of 2021. Next slide. 
we have been given the economic factors from the city to adjust for CPI improvements. We don't expect a price increase for our guests, as we only have one earlier in 2020. We will be on a path of rebuild and recovery. That is our assumption. We think that 2021 will be performing better than 2020. Digitization is a citywide initiative that is helping us to utilize technology to improve operations efficiencies and enhance guest experience. We will leverage our 2020 experience to have a better 2021. Next slide, please. The expectations of 2021. Next slide. We will not see large crowds and we will not see school field trips. But next slide, please. But we do have to address for a lot of the COVID situation and things that we have to address are health and safety, definitely. There are limitations based on COVID-19 situation. We will continue to provide low density activities, drive through boutique and customized experiences are preferable. We will extend our hours, hopefully to be able to provide more time slots to allow our guests to come on site. We hope to be able to have the return of Zoom mobile, rides, splash pads, and sublines. Financial pressure is really real. The expectation of attendance will be not as much as the prior year. So we will have to um, quickly pivot and find ways of uh, relieving the financial pressures. The construction impact can potentially impact our capacity further by the closure of pathway, washroom, and pavilion closures. Next slide, please. The strategic plan is continue to be very important for us. We will care for our animals, supporting our staff by providing them with training and serving our community and guests, bringing them new technology and also helping our operation to help to improve efficiencies. Next slide, please. The direction that we're taking for 2021. Next slide. Overall, we are engaged and committed to serve our 100,000 Zoom members. They are bringing us $4.1 million of revenue um, uh, a year. And the expectation of a daily capacity is increasing from 5,000 to 6,000 as an assumption for us. With this better capacity, we are able to serve 838,000 guests annually. We will continue our partnership to build relationship with leading organizations to fight fights climate change and biodiversity loss. We are connecting with First Nation community, young diverse family, and also having our sites to be an inclusive site to engage all kinds of guests. Next slide, please. We have unleashed the innovation at the zoo, and we cannot stop that. So we'll continue to execute our successful programs and we will find new ways to have new programs to maximize our revenue. Marketplace and senior engagement is our, our two potential examples of us to be able to engage our guests more. And we also are getting support our, from our partners. We want to leverage their support to continue to operate in a new way. Toronto Zoo Fam, uh, Wildlife Conservancy and the City of Toronto for sure are our key partners. Next slide. We are on a path of rebuild and recovery. Cost management is key to reduce operating costs. Economic adjustments to align our utility and animal food costs. And then having technology to rebuild our path forward to enhance operation and guest experience as mentioned before. Next slide. So now I'll provide you with the detail on the operating budget. Next slide. As mentioned, um, there, is, there are some economic adjustments. You can see utility reduction, gasoline reduction, and water reduction, uh, sorry, water increase. However, we also have a food, seafood for um, seafood adjustment as well. Overall, uh, because of the attendance level being lower, we are able to find additional operating savings because of lower attendance. Next slide. We are, we are experiencing revenue reduction and we are 
expecting that the revenue would be reduced by $12.4 million. So the expectation on expenditure will be a 11% reduction overall, $46.4 million. The revenue is expected to be $26.9 million reduction of revenue of 32% comparing to last year budget, 2020's budget. The net ask that we're giving to the city is $19.5 million. And obviously, this um, proposed budget will require council approval in the new year. Next slide, please. So if we compare the support that we're getting from the city in 2020 projection right now, current year, we require 64% of city support in order to sustain our operation. Next year, in our forecast on a role of recovery and rebuild, we're expecting to reduce that 64% down to 42%. And next slide. That's, that would be the time for questions. Sorry, questions of the board for Lydia. Anybody have any questions? Raise your hand if you do, please. Not seeing any. Would anybody like to speak to this? Matthew? Um, yeah, I just want to say, uh, Aaliyah, thanks. I, I think you did great work. Obviously, very challenging time um, for, for coming in with your first budget, um, working through the process with Jim Dolphin and the committee and, and Brittany um, and Cynthia. I, I think you did an amazing job and obviously very challenging, uh, I, I think, under normal circumstances, but especially under COVID. Um, so just want to say uh, I think you did a great job on it. On it. Thank you very much. And I, I'm also very grateful for all of your support. Thank you, Matthew. Any other comments or questions? Cynthia Lai? Just wanted to add on uh, uh, to Matthew's comment about uh, really appreciate all your it's not easy to, to give a budget, and that's why we're not critical or ask too many questions, because we know that is, is not an easy task, and we don't envy your position at this point in time. I'm sure the, you know, the rest of the board members would agree with me. Just so wanted to, uh, just, to uh, just, just to kind of give you a, a pat on the shoulder and say, keep plugging your way, and just, you know, we, we, we'll get through this together. Thank you. Thank you a lot. Thank you very much, Cynthia. Thank you, Cynthia. Sorry, Vanessa, did I see your hand up? Oh, you're muted, Vanessa. Can you hear me? Yep, can hear okay. you now. I just want to say that I really appreciate to see that we're actually exploring more and more into the uh, digital world. world. Um, and I always thought that that was like a missing part of our, our approaches. And, um, and I guess the COVID world has probably pushed us a little bit more quicker into that area. And I'm glad to see that that area is being... Um, explored and looking into um and the and the reach that he has gone it, it's it's quite impressive and i just want to applaud you for that um and um just out of curiosity the 19 million that we'll be asking for from the city is that in terms of number wise is that similar to what we have asked for in previous years um and is there any conservation that that amount might not be approved given the um the COVID situation that's going on yeah a very good question and thank you for that um the 19 million dollar is approximately 50 percent more we previously on a regular year in a recent year we have been getting about 12.4 million dollars overall so we have presented this view with the financial planning team at the city and they are aware of this increase and they're understandable on the situation that given COVID and given a very big hit on the revenue side, it is our best effort forward to hope to be able to deliver this um, target. And so far, the feedback is quite positive. So we're hopeful that the council will be able to uh, proceed with this proposal. Great. Perfect. Thank you very much.
Thank you, Vanessa. Other questions for Leah? If I could jump in, Chair, um, you know, this budget, you know, we're, we're, we were really diligent about being pragmatic. You know, we feel it's a realistic budget and it does include a lot of cuts as well um, to get to that number. And, um, you know, we believe, we believe again, it's a responsible budget that, that we're, we're we're pretty proud of the work the team's done to get to this point. You know, unlike a lot of places, we can't just stop feeding animals. We can't turn the heat down on gorillas. Um, and we believe passionately in that link between hosting people and running a zoo and, and the incremental gains we can make. Uh, one of the challenges, and, and Jennifer Tracy raised this the other day, you know, in the summer, if you look at that graph that Aliyah showed on, on slide 20, you know, in the summer, those big days are when we made our big gains and we just can't do that in, in the safe, uh, with the right amount of safety precautions in COVID. But we are going to see progress on that and we know uh, we're going to get to thaw out. Um, the other point, thank you for raising Vanessa, is the digital world piece. And and we're really playing from behind here. In some cases, you know, from what I understand, some of our network switches on site are from the late 90s. So, you know, uh, yeah, you're right. It, it needed to be a higher profile and it's going to be a grind for us as we, you know, as we not only play catch up, but have that value to the future. And, you know, we have that dream, you know, and we think we could be, you know, amongst the most technologically advanced zoos in the world in 10 years, if we do this right, celebrating our community and relationships, you know, Mars is down the road, Venture Labs is down the road, you know, Toronto is recognized in nor across North America as a tech hub. Um, let's make that next step. So if, if you folks have connections, please also feed them in, because uh, I think that's so important as we become the community's tech sandbox. Thanks. Thank you, Dolph. Uh, other questions or comments from the board for Leah or Dolph? Uh, seeing none, I need a motion to receive the presentation. Vanessa, seconded by Rebecca. All in favor? Sorry, Chair. This a Sorry, Chair. This is Sylvia. It's a motion to adopt the recommendation in the report. Sorry, did I? Know? Sorry. So it's the motion to adopt the recommendations in the report. It was moved by Vanessa and seconded by Rebecca. All in favor? Carried. And then our next item is uh, number four. Aliyah, you're back on the on the screen for an update on our capital budget for 2021 to 2030. And I believe you have a presentation. Yes, I do have a presentation, and that is following the previous presentation. City Clerk, if you can just go to the last slide for the last presentation. Perfect. Thank you. So I'm presenting the capital budget for 2021. It is proposed to be approved. And next slide, please. It is in a similar framework. I'll go through 2020 with you very quickly, the city guidance, and then lastly, the 2021 capital budget. Next slide, please. In 2020, it is a challenging year and we did experience capital work slowdown, but we are able to pursue with most of our capital projects. Next slide, please. The challenge that we face is a citywide challenge. We are asked to reduce our capital spend and it is up to a 30% reduction. Next slide, please. The major capital projects that we can still uh, complete in 2020 are as follows. Next slide. The completed projects are orangutan phase one. We have the design of the orangutan and also begin um, operation, uh, sorry, begin construction already right now. And then we have new Zoomo being delivered to us. Washroom upgrade, one washroom at the curb root cafe is complete and other washroom designs are in works. We also have the Toronto Zoo Community Conservation Campus Phase 1 design completed. Next slide. The assumption that we're bringing into 2021. Next slide, please. The capacity to spend model will remain with us and the city will get our historical spend to apply that spend rate to our future ability to spend. COVID-19 provide some funding support at this different level of governments, and we're hoping to leverage any government support that will apply to the project here at the zoo. The city has their lenses, including equity and diversity lens, 
So we're hoping to um, look into all those aspects with the city together. As a, as a citywide um, limitation, there is the debt facility for the city up to 15% of their property tax revenue. Cash flow will be very key, and we are working very closely ever since COVID started. We've been managing our cash flow, providing the city with forecasts every couple of weeks, and we will continue to work with them to provide them with the best forecast we can get. Technology will be key. As we all know, this new environment will rely on technology to connect with our guests, staff, and volunteers and community groups together. So technology will be our focus for 2021. Next slide. The major goals that we'd like to consider 2021 a successful year will be the master plan updates. We will have winter accessibility to enhance the site experience. Your rank tank exhibits will hope to um, have completed it by the spring and have opening of the facility by summer. We have the community conservation campus begin construction. The additional funding we're partnering with Wildlife Conservancy and other organizations to leverage any funding that is available for us. The main infrastructure upkeeping of our state of good repair is very key as we have a very old site that is 46 years old. Next, year, next slide, please. The capital budget plan for 2021 will be 90 million of debts altogether, and expectation of donation target will be five million dollars. Majority of the spend will be at our community conservation campus construction. We are hoping to begin construction next year, and then the orangutan outdoor exhibits will also require donation to uh, proceed with the project and completion. Next year. Next slide, please. The 10 year plan is the current plan based on the 2016 master plan. And as we all know, as mentioned multiple times, that we are updating our master plan. So this plan will potentially change with priorities of different programs being shuffled around and finding the best options for us for the path forward. So this plan currently presenting is focusing on our community conservation campus and building service refurbishments and some other initiative we believe will be changed around uh, when we present the next master plan. The total debts that we are expecting to incur for capital plan in the next 10 years is $124 million and a $12 million donation credit. Next slide, please. Now I'm diving into a few significant capital projects and go through a project plan with you. Next slide. The orangutan outdoor exhibits, we are hoping to complete it by spring and have the open door by summer. We have the Wildlife Conservancy currently helping us to raise funds for the exhibits. And the project timeline began in 2018 with design and construction has already begun now. Next slide. The Community Conservation Campus is a very significant changeover for our front entrance. We're turning it into a very massive site with a lot of arrival plaza, orientation plaza, and event spaces. These, will, these spaces will provide very exceptional experience and allow our guests to see the Toronto Zoo in a new and different way. This will be our first and last destination for our guests, so we want to impress them and be able to bring out the conservation importance to them. Next slide, please. AODA compliance is a very widely known initiative that we have to be compliant by 2025. And part of the compliance is to have a winter accessibility uh, compliance for the new boardwalk from Indomalaya to African Rainforest. And this project has been slightly delayed due to COVID-19 budget reduction, but we're quickly also continuing to move on with this project. And this winter accessibility boardwalk will be completed before 2025, along with many other initiatives in ALDA compliance. 
Next slide, please. Building and surfaces refurbishment is an ongoing effort. Next year, we're focusing on building audit repairs and upgrades, facility condition assessments, roof and skyline replacements, and site to service study. Next slide, please. And exhibits holding and refurbishment is another key thing for us to improve animal welfare and also improve the guest experience from different viewing angles. So next year, we're focusing on building polar bears and walrus habitats and beaver otter exhibits upgrade and the river hippo exhibits full upgrade. And continuing with many other initiatives on refurbishing our sites in the future years. Next slide, please. Ground and visitors improvements. We are doing washroom upgrades. We've completed one in 2020, and next year there are many more washroom upgrades to come. Dangerous animal barriers will also be key, as we understand that we can potentially have dangerous animals on sites. That is um, critical. And rich valley erosion control is important, as we know that um, the landscape of the land has been significantly changed over time. Next slide, please. Technology, as mentioned, is key. We hope to enhance the experience for our guests and animals. Zoo app, zoo wise display upgrade, admission system upgrade, and CRM system upgrade will be done next year so that we can provide a new phase for our guests. On the animal care side, we hope to be able to provide more equipment for our staff to the documents, database, and animal care information. We also are partnering with startup companies to explore different options of technology observing the well-being of our animals. Next slide. And finally, last but not least, we are enhancing our experience for our staff, partners, and volunteers. By technology upgrade, the first step we are taking now is the technology master plan Phase two and phase three discussion will be taking place next year. We have AV equipment that are very old. So if upgrading the equipment and event spaces will enhance the experience. We also have our ERP system that are, uh, that are due for upgrades. So we have started the discussion on upgrading the system and putting an ERP out there right now in 2020. And by next year, we'll complete the ERP system upgrade. And then all the other associated systems with linkages to the ERP system will also be upgraded next year. Next slide, please. That concludes the presentation for Capital. I welcome any questions. OK, thank you, Aaliyah. Uh, Cynthia Holmes, questions? Hi, just one question uh, regarding the orangutan exhibit. Uh, so you said at one point the orang this exhibit will require donations. So I wanted to clarify whether there was any possibility that this project would be suspended if the donations don't materialize. Very good question. Um, yes, it requires a significant amount of donations. Um, we received the board approval to expand the scope of the of the budget not in earlier in this year. And the amount of donation effort that is being raised right now has already begun. We have started the process since June of this year. And there is good progress from our Toronto Zoo Wildlife Conservancy to help us improving that. At the same time, we are already recognizing that there are some budget uh, fund sitting aside. There, there is a $2 million from a part of the donations that is already available, but we will try to put the effort of raising funds first and before utilizing any existing available funds. We also have other parts of the funds that are sitting aside. Mm. So we have some backup options to continue to execute this program and we'll continue to hopefully uh, be able to engage different audience and different donors to provide us with the fund. Okay, so can I clarify how much fundraising is required um, to make sure that the project can continue? Um, what is the number where if we don't raise this funds, then we won't be able to proceed with the project? 
Um, the total amount of funds that requires the Toronto Zoo Wildlife Conservancy to raise is four million dollars, and we already have more than that amount sitting as our in our back pocket as a fund that we would be able to pull if this project um, fundraising effort is not successful enough to raise the full amount. So we'll continue to execute this project and we don't expect a delay in this project because of the efforts in fundraising. Thank you very much. Thank you, Cynthia. Other questions for Leah? You do have any questions if you can raise your hand? I'm not seeing any. Dolph? Thanks, uh, from governance longer term. You know, that ten plan, once we go through the master planning process again and update it, is likely to change significantly um, because there's there's a few lenses where um, I believe we have some higher risk. You know, the state of good repair piece is huge for us. I don't believe that's new to you with 80 plus million in deferred maintenance. Um, AODA compliance by 20. 25 um quite frankly we're behind you know some of this work um you know should have happened far sooner so we're gonna have to be very aggressive um because i think that is you know we talk about community this is a given we, we have to be on the right side of this uh, so that is a major lens in this um review and of course animal welfare and the need to offer a year-round experience for our guests in this climate uh continues to grow so those lenses are key ones that we're looking at with that master plan upgrade um, to make sure we're honoring that spend uh, as far as that envelope but at the same time investing in the right things to best serve our animals our guests and our team um, and you know one of the key challenges that we identified there uh, is the importance of staying open you know eighty eight thousand members that we have that want to come to their zoo uh, so making sure we continue to support them um, through these transitions and and i just i have to give a shout out to uh, leona mitchell and her operations team uh, they are absolutely amazing they work closely with our animal care staff with finance they really have to reach right across the organization and you could only imagine how challenging it is to keep a project like the orangutan uh, construction going while making sure we're um, monitoring and uh, all those staff members are also abiding by COVID-19 protocols when supply chains are disrupted. Um, they have just been phenomenal behind the scenes, keeping everything turning, moving, keeping us warm, getting us ready for winter. Uh, and the capital that they work on, you know, is older than I am and in pretty rough shape in some cases. So I just wanted to give them a shout out here. Okay. Thank you, Dolph. Uh, any further questions or comments from the board members? Uh, seeing none, so the recommendation before us is uh, the Policy and Finance Committee at its meeting on September 9th recommends that we approve the 2021 to 2030 capital budget. Uh, can I have a mover for that? Cynthia Holmes, seconded by Cynthia Lai. All in favor? And that carries, and I believe that was our last item of business on the agenda. Dolph. Sorry, Dolph, you're muted. Thank you, sorry about that. I was wondering, Mr. Chair, if we could go into camera briefly, uh, just to talk about a human resources related item. Uh, we can. Um, Sylvia, I'd need. Uh, so, Chair, we don't have an item on the agenda. Which which item would this pertain to? Uh, I think uh, Dolph would like to introduce a new item on the agenda. Can we do that, or? Um, so at this stage, um, I mean, new members can be added by um, members of the I need board. I two-thirds vote, don't I? Yeah. I will uh, propose to add the item to the agenda, please. But what is... Well, um, Chancellor Lai here. Yes, Chair, we would need an item before us. We would need something uh, in writing that we can all um, 
see and know what we are voting on, what we are adding to the agenda. Okay. Can we verbally give you something, Celia, to... At this point, I don't think there's anything written down. No, it was meant to be a discussion, Mr. Chair. That's, uh, there's a reason for that. Yeah, I think, Dolph, we just need, it has to be in, we need text to... So, Sylvia, yeah. I just need to move a motion, don't I, that we... So, the, the, what we've been given so far is the reason to go into confidential, to go into closed session, yeah. um, which is the personnel matters. However, we, the, the board has not been provided with an item um, any sort of a, a heading or a summary to which to attach this motion. So can we, can, you know, can we it has, if we confer it, that's fine. It's, it's not necessarily of an urgent matter, um, but can we send that to you now or? Can we attach it to the CEO update that we received earlier? Or, or I was gonna say potentially the, open, the budget. Can we reopen like, that? This, uh, like, related to the budget. Can I wait until the next meeting, Dolph? If it had to, uh, that's fine. Okay. I also think it could be under um, the discussion that we had about, um, I'll give you your report, Dolph, the CEO report pertaining to some of the responses to COVID-19 and how the zoo is going to be flexing and changing some of the uh, HR matters in relation to keeping things open on Christmas and things like that. Yeah, I think I think the core question is, you know, and, and from uh, clerks, we're looking to hear from you. Uh, you know, we don't have anything written procedurally. Uh, are we in a position that we can't actually pull the camera? Is that is my understanding? Well, we would just need to be advised as to the item on which we're going into camera, and I would need to prepare a motion um, for that. Uh, but we have the items on the agenda have currently all been uh, disposed of. They've all been dealt with. So is, would it be the, um, I would put it in the hands of the chair, but is it the wish of the board to uh, reopen one of the items in order to move a motion to go into camera on that item? Yeah. So, Sylvia, so, I'm going to uh, move a motion to reopen ZB 12.2 Toronto Zoo Chief Executive Officer update so that we can go into camera to discuss matters of a private nature that have to do with um, employee and labor relations. Okay. That good? Yes. Yeah. So, so Chair, you've uh, you've placed a motion to reopen item um, ZB two. twelve point two. So, I will ask you to um, take a vote on that motion. Okay. So, motion. I'm moving to reopen number ZB twelve point two. All the chief executive officers report. All in favor? Carried. So that item is now uh, reopened, and then I'm moving a motion to uh, take the board in camera for a confidential discussion about matters that pertain to the zoo's employee and labor relations. Okay. Can you just give us one second to draft up a motion that we can display on yep. screen? Yeah. Uh, Jonathan, are you able to... If you lose me, do we still have quorum? Uh, quorum is six. It's so six. two, three, two. Yeah, Claudia, if you need to go, yes, I, I, I would still have quorum. Much.
Yeah, bear with us. We're almost there. No problem. Thank thanks, Sylvia. Okay, so we're going to display it now. Okay. Okay, so I am moving that the Board of Management of the Toronto Zoo recess its public session to meet in closed session to discuss, to consider item ZB 12.2, Toronto Zoo Chief Executive Officer update. Reason for confidential information is labor and relations and employee negotiations. All in favor? That carries. So we're moving in camera. So Sylvie, I'll give you so I do need to ask uh, any uh, members of the public and also any uh, zoo staff that are not involved in employee and labor relations uh, to please excuse themselves from this call. Yeah, Mr. Chair, if, you know, Toronto Zoo directors want to stay on, but if there's a couple other things. Sorry, I missed that part, Dolph. Um, if we could have the uh, Toronto Zoo directors stay on, but if the other staff could jump off, that'd be great. Thanks. Okay. Okay, so Mr. Chair, can you complain? Because our staff is going to um, put any of the participants on the call into the WebEx lobby for the duration of the closed session. So if you could indicate, okay. um, are there any staff in addition to the directors and uh, Dolph who need to stay on the call? Uh, no, it's just all from the directors. Well, yeah, well, well I said Robert Ashley Beagle.
Okay, Mr. Chair, we are back. Uh, I can confirm that the meeting is okay. now in open session and the meeting is now live streaming on YouTube. Okay, thank you, Sylvia. I am uh, gonna move a motion that uh, the board accept the report uh, that was just given by the CEO during our in-camera session. All in favor? That carries. And I believe that uh, completes this uh, meeting. I think we've taken care of all of our items on the agenda. Uh, can I have a motion to adjourn, please? Jennifer, seconded by Brittany. All in favor? And that carries. Thank you very much, everybody. I hope everybody stays safe and well and uh, enjoy your weekend. Thank have you, a nice Mr. Weekend, Chair. Everybody, Mr. Thanks, Chair, so. thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye, everybody. Bye. Yeah. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thanks. Bye.